St. Louis. Supercross riders kept bumping into each other while the series champion just rode away from it all. Today at the Silverdome in Pontiac, Michigan, the champ took time out for the fans, but now it's time to go racing again. are having a blast coming up the 43rd Supercross stage in the Silverdome in Pontiac, the most Supercross races ever staged in one venue. I'm Art Ekman. Welcome to round 13 of EA Sports Supercross presented by Speed Stick. Well, Ricky Carmichael holds a 20-point advantage on David Villeman. Villeman is back up to full speed. Here's Davey Coombs. Well, Ricky Carmichael may be on a roll right now. Don't count the Cobra out just yet. After what had to have been the worst month of his professional career, David Billman looks like he's back on the fast track. Last week at St. Louis, his last 10 laps were arguably as fast as those of Carmichael, but a bad start cost Billman any chance of challenging Ricky. But here at Pontiac, Billman looks smooth. He looks confident. He looks like his old self. With a good start, he could get right back in the championship chase. Believe me, there's still some venom left in the Cobra. Art? Our Suzuki storyline tonight, will RC continue his win streak to seven consecutive victories? We've got a three-way battle for third place amongst Lusk, Fograd, and Roncada, and a great battle for the top privateer prize of $25,000. It's tied between Boss and Way. David Bailey, what about the speed stick track map? Right off the bat, these guys got a tight first corner. And I expect to see some guys getting pushed wide right there. This rhythm section right here, we're going to see some interesting lines. There's guys been able to triple twice through there. Of course, the whoop section is always difficult. There it is right there as it leads underneath the tunnel. This is an interesting corner right here. Riders have been having trouble figuring out the best way through. I think inside over the double so they can triple out has been good. And here's that tough rhythm section right here. You'll see ruts developing in the bottom of those, making that really difficult. And there's that first corner. You see that white banner in the crowd? That's probably to protect people from riders going wide in that first corner. <laughs> our lineup sheet now for our opening qualifying round. David Billiman, back at full strength. Ezra Lask, he's won twice here at 97 and 98. Nathan Ramsey and Ernesto Fonseca, Team Honda, Damon Hoffman, Tim Ferry, Sebastian Waugh, Keith Johnson and Isaiah Johnson, Cried, Mason, Andridge, Kelly, White, Barron, Campbell, Riddle, Metz, Papworth, and Brousseau. It's Barrett who drops his 125 bike to get on a 250 bike, trying to qualify for both a 125 main event and a 250. We zero in right now on number 12, David Billman. Trying to get back into this points race. He comes in 20 points down, David. And look how nervous and twitchy he is. Man, that guy's getting himself all fired up. It's like a football player, just beating himself in the head. Lost over a couple of spots from Villeman, uh, Fonseca sandwiched right in between them. We're almost ready to go for our first qualifier of the 250 from Pontiac. Great start by Fonseca. And going down is uh, Sebastian Wall in that first corner. Looked like Sean Fonseca Sebastian. had that whole shot up from our angle and then Wall came in there on the outside but could not make that corner. And like I said, a couple guys got pushed wide. Well, it's Fonseca out in front with Villeman right behind him, Tim Ferry as for Lust, and then Nathan Ramsey. Watch them all come through the whoop session. Chris Papworth out of the state of Utah. Picking up the rear as we go out in front with number 24. Ernesto Fonseca. Fonseca's had an interesting year, but I, I really think he's learned an awful lot this year in his first full 250 season as we now go to David Villeman. Yeah, uh, he's much better than I thought he would do. Getting in the podium a couple of times, and if he's able to hold off Villeman right here, then Ricky will be on the starting line going, man, why couldn't he do that in a main event last week? Just to hold Villeman off in that last lap and a half would have given Ricky a couple more points. See Fonseca, looks like he's got a great start, but Waugh comes in from the outside, leaves it on a little longer, pays the price, cannot get that front end to hold the loose stuff. 
Well, you just hope you're not right behind Waugh in a situation like that. Waugh was one of the finest riders ever to come out of Canada. I think you're going to see Carmichael and all the favorites lining up all the way to the inside. So your finishing position is starting to become even more important in the heat race and to get that exact position on the starting line to give yourself a chance for the start. It looks like Phillip is getting a little frisky. He's looking for opportunity, and so is Tim Perry, number 15 on the fourth stroke Yamaha. The two teammates are part of black. That works out a little bit better for Von Sagan because maybe Billman will be more concerned about Ferry and then Lust back there. So Carmichael getting ready for the start. He's not even looking. You know, I don't care what these guys do. Billman still in second place. Every time I see the number 15 on the Yamaha, I can't help but think, and this is no disregard to Tim Ferry, I can't help but think, but Doug Henry. And Doug was here on site, went through practice, hurt his knee. He was going to try to make the main. Here's Bill and Ferry battling for second. Ferry, a coin move into second place. There's Lusk in fourth. Look out for him. Bill and split wide. Man, what a heat race. And we showed Carmichael up there in the box getting ready for the start of the next heat. He was a full second faster than all these guys in the practice session. wide open for a block pass. As long as he's got a little cushion on these guys, he'll be okay, but he just tripled out of that section and gave himself a little breathing room. Oh, the poor stroke of Perry really giving him a good push on that initial takeoff. These guys are eating him up in the whoop section. He goes in there with a gap and they close it right back up. One inside, one outside for Yamaha. Coming out of the tunnel right here yesterday, right there, Fonseca was in front of McGrath and had the weirdest little crash. He swapped sideways, swapped back to the way he actually did a complete 180 and fell off the bike backwards. And at the end of practice, he went into the tough rhythm section of the far end and tripled twice. No one else I saw do that. So he recovered nice from the crash. It could have kind of ruined his week a little bit. Only the top four qualify. Fonseca Curry of the bubble behind Lusk. Ferry really starting to let Fonseca know. Hey, you go wide there one more time, bud. You're going to give up the lead. He keeps tripling right there. That just saves him a little bit. He needs that cushion before they get to the loop section. An idea of how high they get on those triples. Amazing. Billiman. Barry, and here comes Lusk. Lusk is tailing on the inside just a little bit. Couldn't take advantage of it. You never know with this sport what you're going to get. You know, we're missing Michael Rocco. We're missing Travis Pastrana, Kevin Windham. And you still get great racing like this. Ponsaka and Ramsey, both in their first year in 250s. The longer Fonseca can stay in front of these guys, the more confidence he gets. Billiman on the two-stroke. He looks so smooth in yesterday's practice. Ernesto doesn't fudge. Still triples through there. Doesn't get flustered at all with all that pressure. Billiman was all over him down that straightaway. He just leaned right into him and still triples. Look at this, Lusk is making a move for third on the outside of the whoop section. Can't quite make it go. Look at Villeman getting real creative. Trying to make something happen. Continues to impress as Villeman now on his outside has to tuck in. You know that Fonseca has got a huge cheering section down there in the Honda pits. Because those guys are like, hey, we didn't expect him to do that well in the first season on 250. You know, it's a bonus if he does this well. But he can really help Carmichael down the stretch, take points away from Villeman. His shining moment of the season was not only posting his finest finish in a 250, a second in Minnesota, but in that race, he proved how valuable it is to have teammates for Ricky Carmichael. They were able to pick up five points on the development because here was Fonseca who got in between the two. Here's Russ, moves into third. Fonseca's really got to watch himself for Luke this time. Billiman's got a great run at it. Billiman down the center. Fonseca inside. David Billiman. And Billiman had to just bonsai it through there that time to get the lead. Lusk is making a play now for second on Fonseca. 
Musk is right on the edge for him, I think. These guys all are. Any one of them can still win this race. One lap to go. Check out the pass. One lap remaining. Bellman, see the run he got out of that corner? Clear track. He flew through those first six or seven bumps, took the lead right away, and just leaned into the inside. Boy, well, Lusk, I noticed that replay really bouncing up and down in the, in the whoop section. Lusk trying to hold on to third in points here for the 250 as the season winds down. Millman, Ponce, Lusk, and Mary with Ramsey on the bubble in the fifth. Five. All these guys within three tenths of a second, their best lap. 56.3, the best by Villeman, also lost. Great shot at the end of the whoops of that arm action, the piston-like movement that they have to go through in those whoops. Look at Villeman opened it up. Fonseca did a good job to hang on to second. And it's the checkered flag for Villeman. Final round. Check out this great action in the whoops. The sky's cleared in the Detroit area for a huge pit party for this terrific crowd here in the Silver Dome. As we get set for our second qualifying round of the 250s. Checking out the lineup sheet for our second heat. Carmichael looking for his second consecutive championship. Six-time winner here in this building, Jeremy McGrath. Ron Cotta's won three 125 races here. He'll have a helmet cam on. Boston away. They're tied for top privates here. This year, big money for that on air. And Ryan Clark, again, number 54. <laughs> Check out Carmichael, he wheelies off the starting line right there, number four, McGrath grabs the whole shot, Carmichael spotlighted right here, gets a little squirrely in the first corner, that cost him the heat race win. In the main event, look how aggressive he is, watch him going for those gears, whatever it takes to get there first, he decides to play it smart while his teammate Roncada just almost sends McGrath off the track, Carmichael picks up the whole shot. That was that. Boy, it looked like a little team strategy there for Team Honda at the start. Clear yeah. the way, no? No, I think Steve McGrath the changing checking. his colors. Before you load on, it got straight on that gate. Let's get thinking about that for the main event. That was Skip Norfolk, because we have a, a microphone on Skip, Jeremy McGrath's mechanic, and he, he likes to calm him down. You guys, when the gate drops, it's all you. Hammer, it's all about you tonight. Yeah, he looked great in practice, but Carmichael gapped everybody by a second. I think the strategy there is just, hey, let me, let me just try to ride within myself, because if I go fast enough, like I can, I know I can pick up at least second if Carmichael's in the lead. Force him to ride a great race. If he does, go shake his hand and say, hey, great ride, but no one's really been pressuring him down the stretch. That's what Stefan Roncada's looking at as the board goes sideways. We're set to go for our second qualifier. Top four qualifier. triple into that corner. He kind of blew the corner and wasn't able to double through that section. Tortelli's all over him. He'll fix that in the laps to come. And McGrath needs to learn that that outside starting position on your competitors is not working anymore. Even if you get there at the same time, they got you. He doesn't fix that for the main event and just about kissing goodbye because already Carmichael got about a two-second lead. Look at that. 
half a lap. Lord, look at that. Please. Half a lap into the race, and that's what you give up by letting the guy on the inside of you get that start. McGrath moving into second place, and the Tortelli, number 13, is now in third. With number 41, Heath Boss in fourth, trying to get the edge on the way as we ride along with Stefan Roncata. Roncata back in seventh. He's looking up to Nick Way and Clark, the other helmet can. Look at the different timing. Up onto that plateau. I don't think it's going to work out the best. Now he's got the inside. I thought Nick Way would get him. Well, Roncata did the smart thing. He just stayed on the inside all the way down and forced Way to the outside. Way last week, I saw him just doubled over in the back of the truck. He was having severe lower back pain. He's doing a lot better this week. He did a lot of TV stuff coming into this race because he's from Michigan. Roncata picking up well on our other helmet cam, number 54, Clark. Stuff. Look at this finish line jump. Look at the air. Uh, kind of looked like he came up maybe just a little bit short there, but I like this line. Jumps back to the inside, but everyone's starting to figure out that the inside around that oh. right-hand corner is the back. Here comes Ron Cotter. Oh, and a nice block pass. Clark, they're going at it. They might have felt it. This is exactly the way Ron Cotter passed way the lap before. Down the inside. Clark can with do increased it. confidence because of his 125 uh, awareness and good placement. Ron Cotton makes the move on the inside. Well, obviously that inside is the ticket. That's two laps in a row he's been able to make the move. We were watching from number 54's camera, Clark there, looking at Ron Cotton in front. Ron Cotton needs to move up one more spot to catch privateer he fought the last lap mcgrath reeled in carmichael a little bit put in a faster lap that hasn't happened all week he's still four seconds behind last week it was mcgrath who had the lead and carmichael reeled him in and mcgrath held him off just barely carmichael looking for his ninth qualifying yeah. victory in 13 races he takes it seriously. Last lap, Carmichael got a little bit of that time back. That's a 210. At least Jeremy can ride the pace, and he's got him in sight. He's really picked it up. 2.75. Here they come to the finish line jump. Ricky Carmichael. Over. Let's check out that start again, David. And you can see Carmichael right there. Jumps out to the lead. Looks like McGrath is going to be right there in second, but Kyle Lewis coming in on McGrath's right kind of pinches him off a little bit right there. McGrath kind of gets a little hiccup right there. That gave the break to Tortelli on yep. the inside. And really, that's enabled Ricky to be able to have this kind of a lead right now. It's just fluctuated a few tenths back and forth, but Jeremy can't seem to get any closer. So Ron Cotter has moved up into fourth, passing Heath Frost, number 41. Top four positions qualify as we go to his helmet cam. They got these moves. Not quite as difficult as they've been lately. They're a little bit more mellow, more raceable. See the rut starting to develop through the tunnel right there. And it ripples out of that section into this big bowl. Turns yellow rocks. Those are like baseball size, some of them. They've got a, all they can do to try to get rid of them, but they keep coming back up. You want to know what's happening? As it happens, log on to the live call of each Supercross from the webcast. ESPN.com keyword Supercross. Now the fastest line is to jump all the way up over that tabletop. You see he gets back to the inside again and triples into that corner. Beautiful. See if he'll triple those middle three. Yep, he does. So Roncada, now that he's out of traffic, is able to take the fastest line. His last lap, 56.1, same as McGrath in second place. So Roncada has the speed. He just didn't get the start. Carmichael, McGrath, Torcelli, Roncada, the top four with Voss in fifth and Way in sixth. Clark in seventh. There's Clark. Look at that handlebar action. 
you got to be precise through that section. Fast and precise. As those ruts start to develop, they get choppy in there, and your back wheel wants to dance out of them. Our leader up in the upper right, Ricky Carmichael, and Clark, who's in seventh, we're on board with him. David Villeman. Looking up at the big screen. Yeah. Oh, Ouch. that was ugly. I'll tell you, Carmichael is not pretty, you know? At, at times he is, he can ride pretty. White flag. But he's just fast, and he has changed the sport in the last year and a half or two to the point where in order to win, you got to be scared. You got to push it. It's, it's got to be that mm -hmm. feeling that a lot of riders don't enjoy. And Carmen, I mean uh, McGrath, for years has dominated with flawless style, no mistakes, making good decisions. But that's not good enough anymore. I would think that would be a much harder on the younger riders coming up, deciding what style is going to take the win. You know, like do I follow Ricky Carmichael's style or is Chad Reed's kind of in between? Well, Chad is going to have to step it up. If he races against Ricky Carmichael to the point where he's going to be a little bit on the edge. And if he's not, he doesn't have a chance. Because Carmichael is just he put so much pressure on everybody that, you know, you're starting to hear a lot about arm pumps. And they're all nervous out there trying to run that pace. Here comes Ricky. The trigger the top four or five get into position. Here's Ron Cott in the final qualifier. Here's Clark. Putting even more emphasis, Art, on the start these days. And it, it reminds me, it's like a scaled up U.S. Open from Vegas. That kind of short start, quick left, small first corner. And if you're not on the first five or six gates from the inside, you can forget it. So Ricky Carmichael hoping for his seventh consecutive victory when we get to the main event. Now we'll go back to the trailer and relax a little bit, taking this qualifier. The Suzuki results page. Carmichael McGrath, George Kelly, and Ron Cotton into the main event. Nick Way, Boss, Clark, Evan Favoni, and others, including Lewis, on their way to the semifinal round. The pit party this afternoon, always fun for the fans. And we will be right back to Pontiac, Michigan, with more action in a moment. Last week, action from St. Louis, from the helmet cams of Tyler Evans and Ryan Clark, hold on. Coming up on May 4th, from Las Vegas, the final round. It's pay-per-view, live and direct from Las Vegas, with the real focus on the 125 East-West shootout between Stewart and Reed from the two different divisions. You'll see every race, including semis and LCQs and the KTM Junior race as well. After the qualifying heats here in Pontiac, it was rather apparent, David Bailey, that after the field was defined almost out of the first turn, that there was very little passing. Well, everyone is riding so precise now. And I thought this track was going to produce some passing, but everyone's taking pretty much the same fast line. Carmichael getting out of the gate, pulling away. McGrath, you know, he flux away to the lead, back and forth a little bit. They couldn't gain anything. So what's going to happen is the start is pretty much 90% of this main event. The only guy other than Carmichael that has proven he can come through the pack is David Billman, but he was nine seconds slower than Carmichael team. So it looks like Carmichael can keep his streak alive here. Right after Carmichael got off his bike uh, during that heat race, our Davy Coombs talked with him. Ricky, as far as the heat race goes, perfect start, great laps, nine seconds faster than Billiman's win. Ah, it feels good, Davey. You know, uh, David got caught up behind a couple riders, and uh, sure you would have clicked off a couple better lap times, but uh, that's the way it goes, you know, and starts everything tonight. This this uh, starts really, really short, so, uh, you know, some bad things can happen in the first time we try to avoid it. Good luck in the main. Thanks a lot. Our writer of the week from EA Sports is a collective group, a group that is and has been the grassroots of this sport. They are the Privateers, and three of them visited with our Jeff Emmy. Privateer is a guy who is backed by a few good sponsors who are willing to pay 
for the expenses and, and suck for your mechanic and get your bike to the races. You know, the privateers out there are doing it on heart and maybe their bikes aren't perfect every weekend and maybe, you know, they're they're running on borrowed parts or, or whatever. But uh, you know, they're they're out there trying their best and their ultimate goal is to be you know, be the one that is out of that factory semi. Last year I I it was pretty much me and my mechanic on our own doing whatever it took to get to the races. We organized ourselves and uh, between the, the two of us and about 30 other sponsors, we made it happen. You can make a decent living. You can't rely on this sport at this point unless you're a factory rider making, you know, six digits. There's really good money. And so if, if all of your expenses are covered, you can make a pretty good living. This is what I live for, is to race motorcycles, and I want to try to better myself. I want to come here and do the best I can against these factory guys so I can get the help that I need to win races. You know, I don't feel like my equipment is is terrible by any stretch of imagination. My stuff is very good. I mean, until I get that, that chance to be on that ultimate equipment, that top-of-the-line factory stuff, I mean, I'm not going to give up. No, I mean, I definitely feel like like I should have some of those guys' jobs. You know, I don't have the, the latest technology that Yamaha can offer, but I do have a damn good bike in, in, a, in a production Yamaha. What's the biggest piece of advice you can give to an upcoming privateer? Just work, 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 and sooner or later you'll get it. If I knew then what I know now about how much effort, how much time, how much actual riding, running endurance work you need to put in before you get to this level. It makes a world of difference between finishing top 10 and, you know, finishing 18th in the main event. With uh, literally thousands of dollars on the line at the season's end, look how close the privateer points are. Boss and Way are tied. Lewis and Waugh still battling for that third spot and Keith Johnson rounding out the top five. Our Honda flashback. On the flashback, Ricky Carmichael's wild go for broke style. Stay with us, made of it just around the corner. We're back at Pontiac, Michigan for the 250 main round 13 of EA Sports Supercross. The fans have had a great time out of the parking lot tailgating and inside the stadium. They're ready for action right now. And you can watch round 14 action from Dallas on ABC Sports tomorrow. Join Terry Gannon, David Bailey, Davy Combs at 3 p.m. Eastern, noon Pacific for the return of Travis Pastrana and that 125 West Championship run. Those that qualified for the 250 main here in Pontiac out of the semis, Waugh, Huffman, Johnson, Riddle, and Klein. And then out of the second semifinal round, Nicholas Way, Kyle Lewis, Evans, Clark, and Pavone. Our Nissan last chance qualifier, Nathan Ramsey and Heath Voss. They made the 20-rider gate. Checking out the Suzuki starting line. 20 riders for 20 laps of action. Carmichael, Villeman, Bud Lights, McGrath, Fonseca, and Tortelli up at Team Honda. Lusk and Ron Kotoff of Team Chevy Trucks, Kawasaki, and the rest of the crew, including Ferry, Way, Waugh, Lewis, Huffman, Evans, Johnson, Clark, Riddle. The 32nd board is up. We're ready to go. And you can see Carmichael right there. McGrath just to his right. Villeman right here next to Ron Cotta. Those first five gates, I have a feeling, are going to be the ones that come out of the corner first. And Ricky Carmichael make it seven in a row. We're off and running.
Michael in second place now behind Fonseca. Lewis was credited with third after the opening. putting so much pressure on Fonseca. Here he goes. Here comes Carmichael. Fonseca holds on. I don't think Fonseca and Ramsey and the other Honda guys are really racing like, hey, I want to win. I think they're all riding for the betterment of Ricky Carmichael in this series. So I'd be surprised if Fonseca held on his entire way, even though he can. He was very impressive yesterday in practice and, and again in his heat race. McGrath is up to seventh. Philemon is in eighth. And Roncada in ninth with Ferry in tenth. Fonseca holds on to the lead over the finish line jump. Carmichael's right there. My well, Philemon's got to be hating it. Clear back in uh, I don't know, ninth, eighth, something like that. He's got just about every factory Honda rider. Oh, Ricky! That is a tricky section. And I was going, he was hitting it so fast that his rear wheel didn't touch the top and throw it back level. Oh, Philemon went by, gave a quick look, and then poured it on. There's Chad Watts. Ricky Carmichael's mechanic, he's up and running once again. Ricky's forcing it. He didn't wreck an ankle or something having to run 40 miles an hour. Lush Delvin third on the replay. Check it out. Watch Ricky when he goes up and loops out double. The rear wheel doesn't touch the top. Loops him out. And if that kid wasn't as solid as a rock with one of the most impressive training programs in the sport, I don't think he could walk away from that and get back in this battle as aggressive as he has. He's in 19th, moving to 18th right now. Bam, a head plant knocks the visor off, so he's going to look like a snail the rest of this race. He's probably going to reach up and try to tear that off. And Philbin crack into his 20-point lead. See, he can't get that visor loose because it's screwed into the side of the helmet. Don't think that ain't distracting him. This kid's tough, though. Anything can happen in Supercross, no matter how dominating a rider can be, and that was just proved when Ricky Carmichael hit the deck. Ponsvika wow. and Tortelli now are starting to pull a little lead on Ezra Luskin third. Any With one of these first six guys, Art, can win this race. The gentleman in six. McGrath is there. Lusk is there. Ramsey. This is the weak guy in this group. I think will be Tortelli only because he's missed so many races, but everybody else here can win this thing. Doesn't Philemon have to make a move pretty soon, though, before Carmichael starts coming back? He's going as fast as he can. These guys are running a, a ridiculous pace right now. They've dropped Perry and Roncada. Tortelli, 58.3 in the last lap. Lust, 58.4. Ramsey, 57.9. McGrath, 57.9. And Philemon, a 57.6. Oh, these guys are they're pushing it hard. Lust tripling into the corner. But he can't. Now he's in fourth. Now he ruined Jeremy's momentum, and here comes Villeman, it looks like. Villeman makes the pass on McGrath. He's in that far corner of the screen, now moving in Lusk there. had a good idea tripling into that corner, but he couldn't do anything about it with Tortelli in the way. Tortelli on the inside, and Lusk trying to make a move now on Ramsey with Villeman right behind him. Villeman desperately trying to get up front. McGrath is behind Villeman. There you see number 11, Lusk, and he is in fourth. Ramsey moving around him. Ezra's looking good. Carmichael's in 13. Ezra and Villeman are the fastest riders of this group. They're the ones making things happen, passing, able to, to try different lines and still close the gap. Boy, it looks like a tight break. Oh, Sebastian Tortelli! But you could throw a blanket over the first six. Chuck it out again. There's Tortelli. And Ramsey went down and held up McGrath. And watch Tortelli. He must have landed on with his foot on the brake or something. He just made a left. That was good. The filament was uh, back far enough to be able to react to it. But with Ramsey going down now as well. Fonseca left filament. Edward can smell a win. He 
can smell it. You know, I was talking with George Ellis. He drives the Kawasaki semi before the main. I go, hey, is Ezra ready to win one of these babies? There's Ron Cotta checking out Nathan Ramsey. He just went down after the whoop. And George goes, well, I don't think he can beat Ricky Carmichael. I don't think he believes he can beat Ricky Carmichael. We were hoping he can, but with Carmichael out of the picture, Lusk has to believe that he can get around Fonseca. For the win. He's one of only four pack riders to make the gate in every race this year. That's a tremendous compliment to him. The lead is being challenged. Lusk. It's tied up a little bit, but Fonseca, now Philbin goes down. Tim Perry cuts through. Here comes Ramsey. And McGrath was able to slide back around Roncada and get up on the rear wheel of Philbin. So it changes the complexion of the race just like that. Check it out again, Villeman going down. Now Lusk tried to get in there and make contact, and then Villeman came in and was like, well, I don't want to plow Ezra. I thought I had a run at him, but it's not going to work. He laid it over and went down himself. And when he was getting going, the next guys through there were, after Ramsey, were Roncato and McGrath, and McGrath snuck in for another pass. Pavoni fans, your rider's off the track. Right now, it's Fonseca and Lusk battling it out with Curry in third. Lusk number 11 against Fonseca number 24. Look at the real battle. somebody and that's what it might might come down to and now Ezra doesn't have to worry about Billiman on his tail I talked about Billiman and Ezra they're the fastest two guys with the most tricks on this racetrack to get around somebody and he doesn't have to deal with Billiman anymore so he can be a little bit more patient unless Barry starts breathing down his neck so far he hasn't so Billiman likely has given him some points now here's a, a line that Ezra has. It's going to go to the inside this time, though. If he'd have stayed wide, he could triple into this corner. Here comes Lusk. Shows him a wheel. Looks like Fonseca is carrying Lusk. Goes to the triple. Lusk comes in for the Fonseca. Fonseca comes right back. Back in part. We go with Pontiac. Oh, my goodness. What a ride. But Perry holding on close at third. Let's go to Davey Coe. Davey, can you hear us? This, but the fastest rider on the track right now is number four. I just watched Chad watch his pit board. Carmichael's worked his way up to about eighth spot, is riding a second and a half faster than Fonseca and Lusk right now. Don't count Carmichael out of this race. He's right behind Ron Cotta, who's got our helmet cam. There's plenty of time left. Ricky is actually catching everybody up. But Lusk! Lusk number 11. He equaled his best this year with a second place. Oh, Davey, good call on Carmichael. I lost sight of what he was doing, taking a look at all his action up front. But Art, Carmichael is catching everybody. Here he is in the corner before the move. Here comes Carmichael. He's close. 
McGrath is right in front, number two of David Milliman. Just lost it in the whoops. Focus. I think his focus was gone. He thought he had this thing in the bag and everything changed. Ferry was getting away from him and he blew it. So Ricky Carmichael now. Focus that. Oh. 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 Behind the stopwatch. The difference. This lap and the last lap. Carmichael is, is taking every chance he can take. He's tripling everywhere where nobody else can in the rush. Pfizer is in his face, and he's still the fastest rider on the track. Check out the leaderboard now. Ryan Clark, Elma Cam, Jim Ferry, Ramsey, McGrath, Carmichael, and Fonseca are top five. But Carmichael is on the move. Division of Roncada. Pontiac. Our leader is Ferry. Ramsey's in second. But look at this battle for third with McGrath, number two, and number four, Ricky Carmichael. Time is running out for Carmichael. And look at that! Ricky Carmichael taking it to the chest by the bar! They look at each other! Carmichael moves on McGrath into third. And Ferry went down. That's the leader. Can win the race. He's got to get around his teammate Ramsey. Three laps to go, and Ferry goes down. Ferry was riding beautiful. He's actually starting to pull away, turning 57 while well, everyone else is on 58. Now Ramsey has a chance to win his first 250 main. Nathan Ramsey inherits that lead. Ponsek is led. Lusk is led. Ferry is led. Ramsey now becomes our fourth leader. Jeremy had just gotten bumped from the podium. Watch Carmichael down this straightaway right here. He, tri no, he didn't do it that time. He's been tripling into that corner. And he'll triple right here. Didn't get the timing right, but it worked last time to make the pass on Jeremy. And when Ferry going down, Jeremy still got a podium. Hard to believe he's only had two this year. Number 25 is our leader, Nathan Ramsey. Here's Carmichael. Check out Ferry's crash. Looking good on the way in. He gets sideways on one of those ruts off the track and just tips over. That was his plane laughing, just tip over. Right? He's going to kick himself after this. Could have had this thing. He had it in the bag. It looked like he was pulling away, Art. He had five laps led coming into this race. One at Daytona and four in New Orleans. Took a second at Daytona. Probably doubled that total of lap led. Lap sled, but then went down. Now Ramsey 57.9 to 57.8 for Carmichael. Jeremy's doing a good job to try to stay in contact with Ricky. Putting himself in position, forcing Ricky to ride. On the, edge, the way he's been riding this whole time, and maybe that's going to take its toll on him eventually. He might go down again. He's got to try. This is the latest in the race. I've seen Jeremy really trying. Here's Ricky's wreck from the beginning of the race. And Carmichael is going so fast that he's riding in a rhythm that the track will not allow. And right there, he went up that hooped out double so fast the rear wheel didn't make contact. He needed it to, obviously. We're on the final lap, David. Chad Ramsey, hold on for his very first 250 victory holding off the defending champion. He trembles if he can triple this section here. And he does. Oh, he's getting close. Ramsey won the 125 race here last year. One of his eight supports the Giants in career wins. But can he hold off? Ricky Carmichael into the woods. The pressure's on. These two battled it out early in the race this year. But then it was so early that Ramsey was letting Carmichael 
Michael, I think, have the advantage as teammates. Now, he's on the verge of winning his way in the first. In fact, he's the first first time 250 winner since Ricky Carmichael back at Daytona three seasons ago. What a great race! A first time winner. We'll be back. An amazing race. Honda's result page looks like this. Nathan Ramsey mathematically eliminated from the championship last week. It's his first 250 win. RC, an incredible comeback from 17th. And McGrath, his second podium of the year. Let's go to Davey. Well, Nathan, this is it. This is what you wait your whole life for, man. You just held on to win an instant classic Supercross race. Man, I, I can't even explain how I feel right now. You know, my 450 got me to a good start. I, I went to the last chance. I was way out here, and I was like, you know, this is one time to put that power to use. So I tried to, and I came out pretty good, and it was just a lot of things happening. You know, Ricky went down, and as soon as he went down, I think everybody kind of went like, uh-oh, here we go. We got to try to win this, you know. So I just tried to ride really consistent, and everybody kept bobbling, and, you know, I mean, might not have been the fastest guy, but I definitely put some, some consistent laps in. On the Honda points page now, RC adds to his advantage. McGrath moves into third in points, and Way takes the privateer lead over Voss. Back to Davey with RC. Ricky, big crash. You break your visor. No front brake. Bar spent back. I have never seen someone work that hard in a Supercross race. Thanks a lot, Davey. Man, you know, the whole time I'm just thinking, man, I'm giving up so many points now. This is not going to be any fun. And I didn't have a good feeling tonight for some reason, man. And sure enough, I got a bad start in the main, and uh, but that was a fun ride. You know, you need to have rides like that to, to, to show that I can come from behind just, just for myself. You know, I always get good starts and kind of get out there in front and never have to work for it. But tonight, I worked my butt off for it. Whoa, the most unpredictable, incredible race in my recent memory. Our next telecast, Dallas, Texas Stadium. And we'll get back to the 125 West and crew. Art Ekman, David Bailey, David Coombs. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more information, log on to ESPN.com.